Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. We've been studying uh, about salt and light. And yesterday we talked about light, and uh, we're going to be continuing to study about what it means to be the light of the world. Uh, we know God is light, and Jesus is light, and you and I as Christians are light. And we found out that we have this, this light, we have this glorious message within these, these earthen vessels, and uh, we have a message to take to the world that's very valuable. So we're into lesson number 42 as we see what God expects of you. And we see that uh, light penetrates by nature. It cuts through the illumination of darkness. We mentioned that earlier. It says over in 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, he says, listen, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So he's identifying us as Christians. Okay, we're children of the light. We have the light. We, we're we indwelled by the Holy Spirit and we're, we're called to be light in this world, to, to lighten the path, to draw people. It says here that we want them to follow us and we want to eliminate the darkness. We use that illustration you know, when you walk into the dark room, the light switch goes on, the light bulb lights up and darkness is gone. So we get that idea. And then light enlightens, it enlarges your vision and knowledge of your area. Over in John 12, 35, we'll talk about this. Then Jesus said unto, unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness know not whither he goeth. So you see what he's saying there? He says that once you, once you turn on the light, you can see what's going on in the room. The light dispels the darkness, and you can see where you're going. You can walk. You know, the other night I was trying to walk, and it was dark, and I was around some stairs, and, and I didn't step completely on the step, and I started to stumble. You know, I caught myself. But the idea is in, in the darkness, you can't see that. You can't see the hazards. You can't see the problem. But by turning on the light switch, it's very obvious where the steps are and where you need to walk. And that's the way it is in life. Once we turn on the light, we see the areas we need to walk and we see the direction we need to walk. And that's what he said. Uh, you're, you're going to have the light this little bit. He was going to be there a little bit longer. He said, a little while, uh, yet a little while the light is with you. But he says, so while I'm here, you walk in the light. He said, lest the darkness come upon you. And of course, in the darkness, we don't know where we're going. And that's where the lost person is. Remember before you say you had no direction in your life. Yeah, I know worldly speech and speaking, but I'm talking about spiritually. You had no direction. You had nothing going for you. But when the light shined into your life, the glorious light of the gospel, and you come to know Christ as your Savior, now you saw where you're going. You have purpose. You have meaning. You have direction. Okay? Light reveals it's, it opens up the truth of an area, and we see uh, everything that's going on. Let's go over to John 14 and 6. He says, John, Jesus said unto him, I, listen, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we see here, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He, he is the only way. <laughs> if, if you want to get to the throne of God, there's only one way to get there. And it's a narrow way. And it's through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That cross, that cross that he was mounted on there, he was nailed to there, that cross that he was crucified on, uh, that blood that was shed there paved the way to the throne of God. Okay. And that blood opens up the light. With that blood, once you have that blood applied to your life, applied to your sins, then you have eternal life and you have a clear path. But there's no other way. So other people tell me, and it, I've heard it, and they tell other people, you go, you have to do this, you have to... No, no, no. He is the only way. So we look at that. And while you have light, he talks about, he says, while you have light, believe in the light. In other words, trust in the light, put faith in the light, that ye may be the children of light. And children of God, these things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Now, we sometimes are just reading verses like this to, to emphasize what we're, the point we're making. We kind of lose some context. But the idea is we look at it, it says we're, we're the children of light. Jesus is the only way and we're, we're part of that only way. We have the faith and trust in Christ. A light guides and discriminates between right, the right way and the wrong way. Wow. The light, and that's why when you, you don't know, what should I do or shouldn't I do this? I have people challenged all the time, should we should you drink alcohol or not drink alcohol? Should you do this or should you not do it? Should you dress this way? What about tattoos? What about ear piercing or piercings, body piercing, all these kind of things? People want to know uh, what's right and what's wrong. He said, light guys and discriminates between right and wrong. And so in John 12, 36, while you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light, 
these things spake Jesus and departed and hid himself from them. I am come, I am come a light into the world, and whosoever listen believeth on me should not abide in darkness. When you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going to abide in darkness. The light it comes in, the darkness is dispelled. They, they can't go together. It's kind of like fear and faith. They can't walk together. Darkness and light can't walk together. Okay, so we see here, he's talking about that it discriminates between the right and wrong. So if I have the light, I know what's right. So then I have to respond to that. So that's why we have within us the Holy Spirit. He, he helps guide us and direct us in the right way. And so when we take the Word of God and the Spirit of God, we have everything we need to walk in the, the right way, to walk in light and not in the darkness. He says, the next verse I have here is uh, John 8, 12. And he says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In other words, we have eternal life. We have that life that's going to last forever and ever as we are. It's called to be light of the world. We, are, we have the light when we come to know Christ as our Savior. Light strips away the darkness. And then we look over in the three, John 3, 19 and 20. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world the Lord Jesus Christ, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Oh boy, I tell you, that's the truth. There's so many people reject Christ because they're in sin and they don't want to let go of their sin. Uh, they want to stay in that sin. is fun for a season and they don't want to let go of it. So we see that. And it's for everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light. How much, how much burglary and everything goes on in the daytime? We hear about shootings and that. And it, today it's getting more and more prevalent in the daytime. For, but for years past, most of your crime and everything was done at night. People do it under the cover of darkness. They don't want to be detected. Now, with uh, things going on, it seems like they don't care uh, because there's not much consequences. We see people get shot and shoot people, and, and there's, nothing, there's no consequence. They try to justify it to try to excuse it. And we won't get into that, but for everyone that doeth evil, evil hateth light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds be, preferred, be reproved. And that's one of the problems we run into sometimes within the church. People that are caught up in sin, uh, they, they don't want to hear the Bible. They don't want to hear you quote scripture. They don't want their sin exposed. So the, the Word of God will reprove. It points your sin out. It says, this, this is what's wrong. And so many times people, that's why when you talk about church discipline, it's so hard because people don't want to be confronted with their sin. Uh, they, get, they get angry. Uh, sometimes they leave the church. Uh, they get all, you know, all upset. When you try to take the Bible say, this is wrong uh, with abortion. We hear this about abortion and, and uh, homosexuality. When you take the scripture and try to show people what the Bible says about these things, uh, they get upset. Uh, but it's pretty plain what the Bible says. So... Um, we see here that he's talking about it. it strips away the darkness. Light defeats chaos. Okay, so that you, so we see over here in Philippians 2.15. He says that, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, whom ye shine as lights in the world. So, we're going to close out this with this portion of scripture here, but I just want to ask you, how bright is your light? Can people see in the darkness? Can they see you making a difference? And that's, again, it gets to be your challenge and my challenge. What are we doing for the Lord? What are we doing to bring people to Christ? We, we have the light. We have the light of the Word of God. We have the, the light we're indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. We have what we need, but are we making a difference in the world around us? Can people see the difference? Do they, do they, does anyone ever come to you and say, well, I, I can see you're a Christian. I can see by the way you act or you, you respond. And the greatest thing, you know, what must I do to become a Christian? What a great question to be asked. Do you know how to do that? Do you know how to answer that question? See, if we're going to be light in the world, we're going to go out into the world. We need to be able to, to share the gospel. And that's the great commission. We're to take the gospel into the other most parts of the earth, every place. There's no place that's to be exempt. It's our responsibility. And Jesus gave us that command. That's a duty that we have. So we're to be salt. We're to be light. And we've got a little bit more to do with the, the light. We'll close this out probably uh, in the next couple sessions. But it's so important. Just, uh, just look at your life and see about how salty you are and how bright you are. How, how much light you're emanating into the world around you. That people can see Christ in you. Well, the, the greatest thing we can do is that people see that Jesus is in us and working through us. And we can demonstrate uh, the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the faith, the gentleness, goodness, you know, 
the meekness, the long suffering, the temperance, all that fruit of the Spirit, when that comes out of us, then, then it makes a difference. But if we're not making a difference, then we're not living up to what He expects us to do. And that's what we've been taught about, what God expects of you and expects of me as His children, not the lost. I, so many times people holler about the people that aren't saved and they do this and they do that and live it. That's not what He's looking at. He's looking at you and I to see how we live, how we respond to the moving of the Holy Spirit, how we respond to the Word of God and what our lives look like in the eyes of the lost. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the day. We just pray for our testimony, Lord, that we'd have a good testimony. Each one of us would be living the kind of life that would draw people to Jesus. For those that don't know Christ, Lord, today we just pray that you might touch their hearts, open their eyes, that the glorious light of the gospel could shine through. We know that someone needs to take the gospel to them. If they've never heard the gospel, we pray today you'd bring somebody into their life that would share the truth of the Word of God, that be your Word, Lord, and show them and explain to them what they must do to be saved and have an eternity spent to spend in heaven. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross and shed his precious blood for our sins. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.